Okay, good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank Brahman for thinking of inviting me to this sort of seminar. To be perfectly honest, I'm usually in a room full of plant geeks and gardening people, so the social media thing is really a whole new idea for me, even though I've been involved in a project that has really been focused on social media. Uh, just, I have a few comments for the previous presenters here today. First of all, Colleen, I'd like to say thank you for the Grow Me Instead guide because it's a really quick reference that when I get all these phone calls about alternatives to invasives, I use that all the time to, to pass that information on to the public. At Royal Botanical Gardens, we're really in the public eye and we get a lot, a lot of inquiries about plants every day, so it's really great. And Brian, I just wanted to share a story with you about uh, being up in Halliburton area a couple weeks ago to visit an ex-coworker. And we're driving along on these ATVs, you know, really up north kind of thing to do, and we see a milk snake in the middle of the road. And my first reaction was, oh my gosh, I'm scared. I'm absolutely scared of this snake. And my, my friend got off his like, ATV and kind of very, very carefully encouraged the snake to go back into the forest with a stick, even though it was hissing at him and jumping. And I was really, really impressed and even more impressed after listening to your presentation that that was his behavior, so I'm going to tell him that I'm really proud of him. Yeah, it, it's pretty amazing. Okay, so I'll get back on track because I know we're short for time today, but I'm here to talk about Veggie Village, which is a new display garden that we've uh, installed at RBG just this uh, last fall, so it was installed in September of last year. And this project was funded by the uh, Government of Ontario Go Green Fund, which I'll get into a little more later. But just to give you an idea of what RBG is, if there's some people in the room that aren't that familiar with it, this is a picture of our property. We have 900 hectares in total. It's a mixture of formal garden areas and natural lands. So in our formal garden areas, we maintain living plant collections. And it's a little bit of a different um, perspective on plants from people that are working in conservation authorities because plant collections mean we collect plants from all around the world. So our magnolia collection has species that grow in Ontario, but also species that are from other parts of the world, as well as as many cultivars as we can possibly get our hands on. So it's kind of a conservation effort on a global scale, and that's really what botanical gardens are all about. And in my introduction, uh, you heard that I was a plant documentation coordinator, which usually people think when I say I work in a at plant documentation, I work in like a factory and I keep track of the plant. but. Really what that means is I, I document all the plants at the gardens. So I database them, map them, and label all the plants. And I'm also a jack of all trades, which I know many of you are, and am involved in Veggie Village as well. So, so that's my formal role at the gardens, but I, I really like to get involved in, in lots of different projects. Uh, and we also have a trail system. So some people come to our gardens, they pay admission, and they actively seek information from our plant collections, and other people are just passive users that come walk our trails just because they want to get outside. So we have a, a really wide audience that we're, that we're trying to gear our programming towards. This was a project that we engaged in a couple in July of 2009, and it was located in one of our formal garden areas. It was called No Mo, No Blow, No H2O, and it was basically the start of this idea that people are not really the only people that are really, really seeking out information about plants, about our plant collections are plant geeks. It's not the everyday home gardener. It's not um, the passive person that just wants to go on a walk on a trail. So we thought we had to kind of refocus some of our gardens and really engage people into coming to our gardens and, and give them something to go home with. So this was the first of those projects called, and basically the idea was to encourage people not to use gas-powered equipment to maintain their lawn, to grow pl plants that are appropriate to the situation that don't need watering every day. And it was three very, very small display gardens that just gave people plant choices and kind of showed them how to design a garden in their front yard that would still be attractive but would also be, have some environmental impacts. The, the second project we did, which opened uh, exactly a year later and was also funded by the, the Go Green Fund, is Veggie Village. And this is located right across the street from our main building, so it's kind of in a more high traffic area of the garden. And this is just some pictures of the construction of that garden. And I'm just going to go over kind of the layout and show you some pretty pictures of, of what the garden looked like this year. And it was interesting listening to Stefan talk about all the different audiences that you can target because without knowing it, I think we kind of designed this garden in that way, which I was really kind of excited to, to find out. 
But basically the idea was we have nine different display gardens, uh, all with a different sort of audience in mind. So you come into the center and there's the feature garden, and the idea behind that is that it'll change every year so we can engage people depending on what is popular that year. So the first year was a biodiversity garden showing the diversity of tomatoes because it was the year International Year of Biodiversity. This year, or, or sorry, this coming year, we're going to be focusing on heritage and vegetables used in the 1812 sort of era because everyone's talking about 1812 this year. Uh, it's hard to relate a garden to a war, but we're trying really, really hard. <laughs> so as you go around here, these gardens are all fairly static with just changing up the, the vegetables that are in them every year. This is a, a global garden, so it was Asian vegetables last year, kind of trying to reach the ethnic community. We have Andrew and Lita's urban edibles, so if you live in like a, a place that is really strict about what your front yard looks like, we're trying to show people that vegetables can look nice in your front yard. We have an herb garden for some people who just want something perennial that they don't have to deal with but they can still use in their cooking. We have a salad parterre which was talking about the carbon footprint of lettuce but I think we're going to change that up this year and let our, our kitchen, our catering at RBG design and plant that garden for their use this summer because we've had a lot of success with them coming out to the garden and harvesting produce. So that one might change this year. We had some container gardens. One was a formal deck garden. One is sort of a, a balcony garden that you can do kind of on the cheap. You can get tires and rubber boots and that sort of thing involved. And then we have a very small, like, kind of condo-style garden. And lastly, the heritage garden. So this year, actually, I, I think I'm I, I said that biodiversity was last year, but it was really two seasons ago when we first opened the garden. This past year, we talked about the botany of vegetables in the feature garden. And we just talked about the different parts of the plant that we eat. So we had a, a small portion of that garden dedicated to fruits, a small portion to seed, and a small portion to roots. And we also talked about some of the plant parts that I think are pretty cool as a plant geek. But the leaf pediole is what we eat when we eat celery, which is a very grotesque version of a leaf pediole. And then the auxiliary bud over there is the, the Brussels sprouts kind of gone, gone wild. So, so we were talking about, about botany in that garden this year. <laughs> 